Hey, what's up, people? I hope everything is fine wherever you are. Uh, my name is Pepe Cuenca. I am a Spanish Grandmaster, and I'm here with all of you again to show you another great game, this time played in the Shamkir Super Tournament, the Gashimov Memorial. Uh, this time, uh, Sergei Karyakin uh, was facing uh, the ex world champion uh, Besselin Topalov in the fifth round. And uh, it's been a really an amazing game, uh, full of tactical shots and, and sacrifices. And it's not so common to, to see Sergei Karyakin at this level playing uh, more aggressively than the coach of uh, the Power Rangers. So uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, analyzing this game, so I hope you guys do the same. And um, yeah, let's just cast the, bull the bullshit as usual and start analyzing what happened in the 64 squares. So uh, Sergei Karyakin played E4. And uh, Beselin Topalov replied with C6, the Karokan defense, one of the most solid uh, defenses in, in, in chess against the E4, right? And D4 controlling the center, D5, and there are several options in the game. Karyakin played E5, the advanced variation uh, against the Karokan. But of course here there are many many possibilities. You can play E takes D5, C takes D5 and C4. This is the so-called pan of uh, variation. Or you can play Knight C3 or Knight D2. Normally it will transpose to D takes E4 and Knight takes E4. For example here Bishop F5 is one of uh, the main lines. But also if you uh, are an aggressive player you can check this line with F3 here. In order to play Knight C3, Bishop E3, Queen D2 and Long Castle. For those uh, players who like tactical positions and uh, yeah but this is another story so e5 was played again uh, different options here so uh, one of the main lines is uh, bishop f5 here in order to put this bishop out of the pawn chain and normally this follows with knight f3 uh, e6 and bishop e2 where white uh, enjoys a nice uh, space advantage and black still has to to solve uh, the the problem of the development on the king side because there are not so many squares for the knight and the bishop so normally black uh, tries different plans here so you can play h6 knight e7 then to follow with knight c8 in order to give to give a free spot to to, to this bishop on e7 many many different plans here but and again this is another story in the game uh, Beselin Topalov played uh, c5 the other main option option sorry just trying to to break the pawn chain already and uh, here, again, different possibilities. Uh, Karyakin played D takes E5, one of the main lines. You can play C3, but then you have to be a little bit careful. If you do nothing, uh, you can end up in some sort of a French position uh, with the advanced variation where actually this bishop is out of the pawn chain. And this is, of course, a better version for, for black when the bishop is on C8, right? I mean, it's a better version when the bishop is on G4 out of the pawn chain. Uh, on the pawn chain, right? So d takes e5. The idea is uh, that at e6, now a3. This humble move, humble move is actually actually quite interesting. The idea, the idea is after bishop takes c5, then in many positions white uh, is gonna be able to play b4, kicking this bishop back, winning a tempo, and then giving this b2 square for this guy here to protect the e5 pawn that could be one of the weakest pawn of, of white's position, right? And then after b4, c4 is gonna be played in many many positions, just trying to win uh, some. Uh, uh, space advantage on on the queen side right so bishop takes c5 here and karyakin played knight f3 normal development move uh, on in chess 24 uh, german grandmaster niklas uh, huschenbeck really strong player from hamburg he recommends b4 here and after bishop b6 queen g4 you guys can uh, watch this video series uh, in english i think it's in Eng in german i think it's in german but anyway, yeah, I know German is uh, kind of, you know, difficult, but uh, yeah, I, I agree. Life is too short to learn German. So just try to watch the video and try to, to catch something from there. All right, so here there are two possibilities that Niklas uh, uh, gives. So one is knight e7. And the idea is after rook g7, uh, sorry, queen g7, rook g8, queen takes h7, bishop d4, attacking this rook on a1, after rook a2, bishop e5. And we reach this uh, some sort of uh, French uh, type position where uh, black is a pawn down, but uh, instead he's just uh, captured a central pawn and then white pieces are a little bit uncoordinated, so this position is extremely double edged. Let's say after knight f3, queen c7, for example. And after queen g4, you can always play uh, king f8 here with black, knight f3, knight d7, and bishop d3, and you have, have to choose uh, somebody will choose white, right? But anyway, after bishop c5, white played knight f3, and now knight e7, and uh, 
uh, bishop d3. Yeah, you can play queen b6 here after knight e3, but actually it's it's actually nothing. You just, you just can play queen d2, defending Facundo, and then aiming to go b4. And if you go here, a5, white can play knight c3, uh, threatening to, to go knight a4 and winning the bishop pair, right? So the queen b6 is nothing special. Instead, after knight f3, knight e7 was played, normal development, and now bishop d3. And this move looks like a very humble move in order to castle, but you have to be really careful here with black. Uh, don't try to go short castle here, because then BOOM! Bishop takes h7, ra da 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 Then this is very typical sacrifice, and um, black can resign already. Because after king takes h7, there is knight g5 here, and if you go king g8, then queen h5 is actually just crushing uh, black's ass here, because there is gonna be checkmate. If you are gonna try to scope, to, to escape, sorry, with rook e8, in order to give this square for the king and the, 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 the g8 square to cover with the knight, this actually doesn't work, you can just uh, give checks, 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 king e7 and bishop g5. And if you move the queen, then uh, I, I'm gonna enjoy this this free queen on the a that it's so damn tasty, right? And if you play f6, then queen g7. This time Facundo doesn't solve the problems, no, no. And I'm quite sad about that. But you know, checkmate is checkmate. So, um, sorry, let's go back. Uh, 97. And if you go, if you go short castle, bishop takes g7. Bishop takes h7. Sorry. King takes knight g5 and king g6. Then there is another typical reaction when this king goes out and it's the move h4. The idea is quite simple. You just want to give a check and then force this king to go to the only square h6, where actually you are going to enjoy a lot of discovered checks on e6 and on f7. And this is actually quite unstoppable, so black actually has to resign at this time. So. Yeah, so after bishop d3, knight g6 was played uh, by Topalov in order to, to, to stop all these ideas. And actually, uh, one with white would love to go h4 and h5 here, but there's actually no time. Because of this pawn on e5, it's going to be attacked so hard that actually black, white is not going to be able to defend it. Let's say knight c6, and after queen e2, just play queen c7, and then e5 is going to suffer a lot. So... Yeah, so that's why after knight g6, white went short castle here in order to go rook e1 and then b4, maybe bishop b2. So you're gonna be able to defend this guy on e5. Knight c6 was played by Topalov and b4 by Sergei Karyakin, forcing this bishop to go back to b6. And now, different possibilities according to my database rook e1 or bishop b2 are the main lines. So bishop b2 was played by uh, Sergei Karyakin. Um, Again, two possibilities, two main possibilities, short castle or knight f4. Knight f4 actually looks uh, quite natural since uh, probably uh, black is going to win the bishop pair since bishop b5 is not a normal move here. Um, so, yeah, this was the game. And now here, uh, Karyakin uh, trusted in Carlito, so he went and played uh, c4 here. And this is an important moment because black can win the bishop pair as uh, Topalov did in the game. But then there are going to be some troubles related with the space, right? Um, here there are um, different options. One is short castle here, but then bishop c2 is a really interesting move. You want to play now c5 and then, uh, and then enjoy a lot of advantage and keeping the bishop per looking with beautiful eyes to this uh, king, right? Um, if d takes c4, you can just play knight bd2 and then uh, you're going to recapture this guy on c4 and you're going to enjoy this weak square on d6, right? So, yeah, the other option is to go uh, after c4, is to go uh, d takes c4, right, for example. But then this endgame is actually quite good for white. Uh, takes, takes, short castle and knight bd2 with the same idea of enjoying this uh, uh, spot on d6. And then this guy here is actually quite punished. There is uh, uh, some uh, teacher saying to this guy on c8, just uh, on a corner, just... Uh, right a hundred times uh, i'm not gonna enjoy uh, i should enjoy free diagonals in a chess board right but this guy here on c8 is actually so sad right it's actually uh, quite difficult to develop and um, that's uh, the reason white enjoys a really nice end game here so after c4 uh, topalov play knight takes d3 queen takes d d3 and d takes c4 uh, if black goes uh, short castle, you can actually play knight c3, forcing black to, to take on c4 and then reaching some sort of the same uh, kind of position that then we are going to take a look here after d takes c4, queen takes c4. And this is the position, right, where black uh, enjoys uh, the bishop pair, but the thing is 
this square is uh, way too important here because there are many possibilities to, to reach d6 and also to enjoy the open files for the rooks. This bishop on c8 is quite bad and then there is a lot of uh, space. There is always uh, this possibility to bring the queen to g4 and then to start creating some troubles on the king side. And this bishop could be actually quite dangerous if some knight uh, uh, at some time uh, ends in on f6, right? So Topalov here uh, played knight e7. It's an a novelty according to my database. There was a game between Istratescu and Grachev where Istratescu, oh shit, Istratescu played uh, knight is uh, short castle, sorry. But knight e7 is actually quite natural from the human point of view, right? Because you want to go and enjoy your best square, which is uh, d5, where no pawn can actually kick this knight back from there. So knight e7 is quite, quite, quite natural. So knight c3 was played by Sergei Karyakin at this point. And uh, bishop d7 by Topalov, queen g4 attacking g7. And uh, Topalov played uh, uh, a prophylactic move, bishop c6, in order to stop queen g7, because after rook g8, then there are troubles on the g-file, and bishop f3 is going to come. So the other option here was knight a5, but after knight e4, bishop c6, for example, rook fd1, after queen e7, let's say knight d6, and white is, is just much better here. So queen g4, bishop c6. And rook a d1, attacking this uh, this queen, simple chess. Queen c7, and here at this point, uh, Karyakin uh, played a really, really great move, in my opinion. So the thing is, you go b5 straight away, black can take on f3, and then he has removed his uh, worst piece, that was the bishop on c8, and now you guys, uh, you, you can just go short castle, and white uh, is... Uh, doesn't have so many pieces in order to create some serious attack on the king side. But after knight g5, of course, you are threatening to go b5 here, and then this bishop doesn't go, doesn't have uh, this possibility to exchange. And not only this, this is the minor thing, but then you are also targeting uh, a6 and f7. But more important, you want to go to e4 maybe, and then uh, to d6. And then after, go, after you go to e4, in case black takes on e4, you have the possibility to recapture with another piece, right? So that's the idea of knight g5. Of course, black can take on e5, and this is what happened in the game. And then you have to analyze all the whole variation, right? So knight g5 uh, was played, and uh, black here has several options uh, besides taking on e5. So let's just uh, analyze them. For example, you go short castle, you can just play b5, and after bishop b8... Uh, you have to always to be careful to go to d5 because after all the exchanges, then there's some tactical shots and there are some tactical shots uh, taken on e6, right? So bishop d8 and now knight c e4. And look at how all the pieces are coordinating. This guy here on e5, the knight here attacking on h7, this knight can jump to f6. There are so many threats here for, for, for black. Actually, it's so difficult to play from the practical point of view. And then the other option is after knight g5 to play h6. Just kicking this knight back to g to e4, but this is part of the plan. After short castle knight d6, there is a nice pressure here. This knight is just uh, on the uh, uh, Topalos uh, throat, and then quite difficult to play for black. So after queen g5, knight uh, queen takes e5, then b5 was played. Still, there are not so many uh, discover nice discover moves since the bishop on b2 is hanging, so it's not that easy to. To move the knight, but now b5 is actually quite uh, quite strong. The idea is if you go bishop takes d5, of course, now you take on d5, and after queen takes b2, boom, who's your daddy? No, no, with the queen, no, who's your daddy? Then I'm not your daddy, but if I play uh, knight takes e6, uh, Kayakin is gonna be the daddy again after Palo. So after f takes e6, then Queen takes e6, just wins, just wins on the spot. And if you take on d5, minimum rook takes d5 is actually quite good since you cannot take on e6. Because after queen takes e6 and rook f5, this is going to be check, 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 check me! So after b5, h5 was played, uh, forcing this queen to go to h4 in order to defend the knight on g5. And uh, yeah, so... Uh, Two options here, so black can take on b5 or can play queen knight g6. You go knight g6, you can play queen b4. Even though this knight is hanging now, this bishop is 2, and then this uh, this king is never gonna castle. Besides, you later you're gonna have this knight e4 move, and then coming to d6, and black is just uh, losing. 
And uh, if you go bishop d7, now this bishop on b2 is actually defended. So you can just move your knight to e4. And then this bishop here is protected. And now knight d6 is coming, entering on f7. Black actually can't resign. So after queen h4, bishop takes b5. Now rook fe1 was played. And queen f5. And here, uh, simple combination by Sergei Karyakin. Knight takes b5 and... Queen takes b5 and bishop g7. The idea is, if you go rook g8 here, you can just take on f7. And if you take on f7 here, then queen f6, for, uh, followed by taking on e6 with the rook, for example. And then black is just losing. But if you take on g7, then knight d6 just wins the queens on the, on the spot and the game. But knight f5 was played. And then at this point, looks like white is in trouble. Because there is a, a double attack to the queen on, uh, on h4 and the bishop on g7 but then there is a beautiful combination by sergey kajakin a beautiful move that probably you have uh, seen already at home uh, what's the move here what's the move here what's the move three what's the move two what's the move one boom knight takes e6 beautiful chess beautiful chess because if you take on h4 then there is checkmate here on c7 look at this is so beautiful this geometry here, all the rooks cutting, and the two pieces here, one giving the check, the other cutting the escape square on f8. So, beautiful chess here. So, after 96, Topalot actually has to resign. Well, he played f takes e6, even though, uh, I mean, f takes e6, he even uh, mm, uh, got rid of Facundo. So, this is actually not nice by Topalov. I'll write him an email uh, telling him not to do this in the next games but instead to resign first. So, rook takes e6, king f7, queen f6, king g8, and now bishop takes a h8, and this is an exchange up, and then his king is actually naked, completely naked here. Um, we all can see his balls. And after bishop takes uh, f2, king h1, uh, he played queen a4, but the simple rook e d6, knight d6 is not possible because of queen g7 checkmate. Rook f8 was played, King G, queen g6, king takes, and rook d7, and there is no way of stopping uh, mate on h7. So, this has been uh, the game uh, between Karyakin and Topalov, uh, and here we can see that Karyakin is not only a solid player. Of course, these guys have uh, 2800 for, for a reason, and if you give, it, if you give them a chance, they'll, they'll, they'll crush you, and then, they, of course, they are able to, to, to calculate like beasts. Um, yeah, so uh, it's good to see Karyakin playing in this style as well. Uh, of course, you can follow all the action in, in Chess24 uh, of Shankir. We are giving commentary in Spanish and I'm trying to do some uh, uh, be, uh, game of the day videos uh, from time to time in English as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Just have a nice day and be good. Bye bye. Bye bye, mi picolissima dama, me tocó partiendo.